Hi everybody, welcome back to part two of making a fabric covered journal out of an artist's canvas board. When we left off in part one, we had finished the cover itself, building it the spine out and covering it with fabric. And now it's all ready for us to start working on the closure and the insides. So I'm gonna put this aside for just a minute and kind of tell you what I'll be doing today. So I want to uh, put a closure, this hitch post closure on my, on my journal. So I'm going to be using this little antique brass hitch post with a screw that goes in the back. So we'll be putting this on and then to loop across the closure, I'll just be using this beige hair tie. So this is just a regular hair tie from like, you know, wherever, you know, the hair supply place where you would buy hair supplies. So I'm gonna be using that. <clears throat> and then I'm also gonna be using this eyelet that's gonna go on the back side for the um, elastic. So we'll probably be working on that first. And then the other things that we're gonna be doing is we're going to be working on putting in our signatures into the journal. So I've put my signatures together. Um, I did this off camera because I don't want this to be <laughs> too long. Um, I have for my two inch spine that I have on that journal, I have seven signatures. And then each signature, I believe, has five pages. One, two, three, four, five, oh, maybe six pages. So let me just check that. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, five or six. <laughs> some of them have six, some of them have five. So that's what I did for my, for my signatures. And I went ahead and anywhere I wanted to sew things, um, you know, or add embellishments for pockets or tuck spots or things like that, I went ahead and got that ready to go. So um, I have another video on putting together signatures and I will link to that below in the show notes if you would like to take a look at, you know, how I put signatures together for my journals. So these are gonna go in here. So you need your signatures. And then we'll also need, um, so, I've created my backing for this already, and I'll go through it very briefly, what I do to create my book cloth. Now, this is, um, I used, it's 100% cotton fabric, but I used a little bit different um, fabric than I would normally use. So it kind of, you know, leaked through here, the heat and bond that I used, and I have paper on the back. So this piece of paper, is the same height as my as my journal. So it's eight and a half inches tall, but then I did it three inches wider than the spine. So this piece here is five inches wide. So then I used, to make this cloth that I'm gonna be sewing the signatures to, I used this heat and bond. So this is a double-sided um, adhesive that you iron on to fabric. And so uh, first I ironed it onto the fabric. And then once that was cool, I went ahead and took a piece of dark, regular scrapbook paper and um, ironed it onto the other side. So that's all ready to go. This is going to be what I'm gonna sew my signatures to, to put them into the book. And then um, I used my template to just gauge where all of the holes are gonna go. I'm gonna do a five hole pamphlet stitch. And you've probably seen me do this in other videos that I have. There's lots of videos out there on how to do it. Um, but I needed five holes in my spine and I need seven across because that's how many signatures I have. So I already went ahead and punched my holes in my template after I kind of measured out where I wanted my signatures to be. And then I went ahead and punched them in my book cloth here that I made. So you can kind of see it on the back. All my holes are already in my template ready to go so that I know where each um, signature is going to be on here. So that's that. And then we'll also need for sewing, obviously you need um, uh, some sort of needle, book binding needle, yarn needle, whatever you, you have there, and then some thread. So I like to use this, um, I believe it's nylon uh, cord thread, 
and um, because it's kind of slippery, I take some beeswax. So this is just a hunk of beeswax that I have and just kind of um, rub it on the cording to make it a little less sticky so that it'll hold tight when I put it through each of the holes. I, I don't have to do a lot of adjusting. I mean, I have to do a little bit, but not a lot. So that's, oh, and one more thing. We'll need, um, this is good. I'm going to use this 12 by 12. This is a, um, a card stock that I'm going to be using for my end pages. So once we get everything sewn in, we're going to cut this down so that it'll fit here and here to cover, to cover this over here. And of course you're going to need, um, your glue, probably a crop dial to, to punch holes and to put eyelets in and things like that. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna work on my closure because I want the bottom of the hitch post and um, the underside of the rivet to be covered with our end paper when we get to that point. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna mark where I want my hitch post and my um, eyelet to go so that I can punch the holes. Now you can eyeball this. Um, you can, you know, use a pencil. I just have this, I just have this um, China marker, this white China marker that I'm just going to mark um, the center because I do want to, I, I do want it to be close to the center. And I know my pattern is not quite centered. So I want to be sure that I'm, I'm kind of doing it on the center. So I'm going to have to move it down here because I can't see where, I can't see where I'm at. So let me start, let me do it here. Seven, so this is nine inches tall. My cover is nine inches tall. So this we're going to go <clears throat> four and a half. So, and I'm gonna keep it in maybe a half an inch or so. Um, that's where I want the hole to go. And then same thing on the, the back side. We're gonna come in one, two, three, four and a half. And I'm gonna keep it in about a half an inch or so. Okay. So now, find my crop a dial here. And if you have the big one, you can use the big one. I just have this kind of hand crop a dial that I like um, a lot as well uh, for things like this, where I don't have to, you know, I don't have to go in real far and I can just do it with my hand. Um, if you're looking for the tools and different things that I use, you can go to madpapercrush.com slash favorites to see what things I use. So now this is not gonna work. So we're gonna have to use the big one anyway, cause I can't even, I can't even fit that one in here. So we're gonna have to use the, the big one for this. It would have been nice to be able to use that, right? But we're not gonna be able to do that. So let me grab my big one, do over. All right, let's see. So this one, I wanna make sure I'm punching my hole at 3 16 here. And then I'm going to just punch the holes first. So let me make sure I can see my mark there. Oof, this is hard to do. There we go. Okay, I have my hole there. And now I'm gonna do the back side. Same thing. Line it up. Oof. Man, that was a hard one. Okay. Oh, hello, glue. Okay, so I'm hoping that my hitch post is going to work. So you get to see it here first because I know this board is pretty thick and um, I, I think it's gonna go through, but I guess we'll find out. And if not, we'll have to adjust on the fly. So some of this fabric didn't get cut. I'm going to cut that just a little bit there to make sure my holes are clear. This one has some frayed edges sticking up. So I'm gonna just try and cut them off a little bit too. And then the rest should get hidden by um, our closure. Okay, so now we're just going to put the screw in the bottom and the hitch post at the top. 
and I do think it will work. So I, I didn't, I don't know how many times it went around the screw, but I think that's, I think that's going to be secure. And then we're going to try to put this eyelet in. Now this is another thing. It's pretty thick. So I don't know. I may just have to glue that in because I don't even think the top is coming up over the hole. I don't think that it is. So there you go, guys. Here's a, this is a working on the fly kind of thing. So I think I'm just going to try to add some glue in and then add some glue to the hole and then put this in. Because I do want, um, I mean, I could leave it with nothing if I wanted to, but obviously that's not, that's not real pretty. So I'm just, I'm going to try to glue this in and then our paper will cover, you know, this, the hole on this side. Um, well, we'll have to have a hole in there when we put our paper down for this one, I think, because we have to get our elastic through. So let me think how I want to do that because that's not going to show on either side. So let me grab another eyelet real quick and see. If two of them will go in, I don't think so. Oh, actually they do, look at that. So I have one eyelet in the bottom and one in the top. And I think maybe what I'll do is just try to glue them together. Um, and I think I have, I kind of want something that just presses them together. And I should probably put glue in first before I do this, but I did get the two in the holes and I like that. And then what I think I'm going to do is put the glue in and then I'm just going to try to um, smush them together as best I can. Let's see if I can even get them out of here. Whoop! There they go, flying. Okay, so let's see if we can do this. I have a little paper down here so I don't get glue all over the place. And I wonder what the easiest way to do this is. And I'm just trying to put glue around the edge of the circle there without it running out too much. And then we'll put one in that side. And we'll see if we can figure out how to get that one back in. And I will need to make sure I don't have glue in the hole, but I'm going to try to get everything pushed together first. And actually, maybe what I can do is I have this little hammer. And I think what I'm going to try and do is I'm just going to, I need to cover this with something. I think I have a wood block somewhere. Okay, so I used my hammer, a wood block, and this is just a jewelry, um, a jewelry block, I forget what you call that, um, to kind of hammer them down together. And I think that worked really well. Now what I want to do is I'm going to take my awl and just make sure there's no glue inside that hole so that we can get our elastic in when we get to that point. Okay, I think that worked really well, you guys. Now I'm just using the awl too to make sure the insides are nice and flush so that I don't end up fraying my elastic when we put that in. <clears throat> okay, so let me put these aside. Now I think we have our cover ready to go 
for our hitch post. So then what's gonna happen is, I'm just gonna put this through the hole, hopefully, if I can squeeze it down tight enough. I may need y'all to po poke that through. And then I'm just going to, once I got it through, I'm just gonna put one end through the other and snug it up. <clears throat> and then when I have everything sewn in, this will be my little closure there. Okay, let's go ahead and put this aside and work on our next step. Put all my tools away that I've strewn about. Next thing is let's work on our signatures. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew my signatures into my book cloth. Now, like I said in the beginning, um, I have a, a book cloth piece that all these are gonna be sewn to. The book cloth is the same height as the signatures. So in this case, they're eight and a half, this is eight and a half inches tall. And the width of my book cloth is the width of the spine plus three inches. So two inch spine here, and then I am added three inches to make this five inches across. And then I centered my template so that I could make my holes for my five hole pamphlet stitch. Okay, so I'm gonna do, I'll do one signature on camera, sewing one signature, um, and then I will speed the rest up so this video doesn't take seven hours. For um, for my signatures, it's easiest for me to sew them in order. So either, you know, front to back or back to front. So whichever way you want to do it is fine. Um, I'm going to take my thread and I use about three times the height of my signature. That's about how much string I want. Um, this is probably, you know, I mean, I know it's gonna be more than I need, but I would hate to not have enough to finish a signature. So that's usually the general rule for me is I use three times um, the height of the signature. And then since I'm using this nylon um, thread here, I'm just going to run it over this beeswax a, a couple times to give it um, you know, a little bit of a coating so that it's easier for me to make sure that it stays in place when I'm sewing on it. So I just do that a couple times. And then I'm gonna use, I don't, I don't need these big needles, I don't think. I'm gonna use my smaller needle here. And this is a, um, it is actually a book binding needle and it's big. Sometimes I think it's too big, but is what it is. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to sew Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I did not punch my holes in my signatures. So I have my holes in my book cloth, but I didn't do them in my signatures yet. And I definitely want to do that. So lucky you, you get to do that with me. So what I'm going to do um, is actually, I'm going to take a template. I have all these little, I think they're one and a half inch strips of cardstock, and they make really good templates because they're easy to fold in half. So I am going to go cut this down to eight and a half, the height of my spine. And I'm probably gonna use this, I'm gonna use my um, scoring board to score the middle, just to make it easy for me to fold it in half. So I'm going to, this is one and a half inches, so at three quarters of an inch is gonna be about halfway. And this part, the folding in half doesn't have to be perfect. You just need a, a straight line down the middle so that you can put your holes in. So now what I'm going to do is 
I'm gonna use my hole punch here. Before I do that, let me do this. Um, I have this little paper piercer, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up my blue cardstock that I just pulled out with my middle line as best I can here, and then just punch the holes all the way from top to bottom, or in this case, bottom to top, and let's see how that did. Good. So I'm just making sure they're kind of in the middle on the line, because when we fold this in half, we want those <clears throat> holes to be right in the middle so that we can punch through. Okay, so now for each signature, I'm just gonna open it up and put this in the middle. And actually, I think what the other thing I'm gonna do, just to be sure, I'm doing this the same way each time, is I'm gonna mark the top with a pencil. So I'm putting it in the same way in each signature. So if my holes are a little bit off, if I would punch one this way and punch one this way, um, they would be a little bit off when we were sewing them together. So um, I just wanna be sure I put this in the same way every time and that it matches the holes that I made from the template. So I'm just gonna hold this in place you can use paper clips to hold things down if you want to. Um, I'm impatient, so that takes too much time <laughs> for me. <laughs> so I just hold them in place and punch the holes. Okay, I think I think now we're ready to sew. So I have my thread all ready to go. I have my holes punched, which I'd forgotten to do. Um, and I am going to start with the last signature. So I just flipped all my signatures over. I have them in the order that I want them in the book um, so that that's ready to go. And then I'm going to start with this one. And like I said, I'm gonna do one for you so that you can see the pamphlet stitch. Um, and then I'll just go ahead and sew the rest in um, so that this doesn't take forever. So I want my um, ending thread to be on the back side um, of this paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, now you have to remember when you're flipping it over like this that things are gonna be backwards. So the first set of holes when you flip it over is really gonna be your last signature from the front side. So I'm going to start on the left-hand side and put this through. And I'm just gonna pull it through so that I have, you know, I have some left so that I don't pull it through. So I have maybe, I don't know, six inches left over here that I pulled through. Now I'm gonna take my signature and also start in the middle there and you could, um, it probably would be a good idea to clip these so that they don't, so that the holes stay together. But I didn't do that. Why would I do that? Because they're already moved apart. So <laughs> let me see if I can figure out how to get this in here. So sometimes you have to go one page at a time to get your holes of all your papers lined up again. And then things hopefully will stay together. And this probably has the most 
pages in it. So you have to watch me do all that. Sorry about that. Okay, so now I'm through all of my signatures and I'm just gonna line that up. So now for a five hole pamphlet stitch, the next step is to go down through one of the holes that's right next to the middle. So you can go up or down. I'm gonna go down and pull that through. And then we're gonna come back up through the bottom hole or the top hole, the last hole in the series there. And pull that through. Now I'm not too worried about, um, you know, keeping this all tight quite yet. I mean, I do wanna keep an eye on it because I don't want it to be too loose that I it will be too hard for me to pull everything through at the end. Um, but at the end, we'll make sure everything goes where it needs to go. So now my next step, um, oops, I'm through the front here, is to go down through the same hole that you went in for your second hole. And I always have to be careful because this nylon, for some reason, I um, end up piercing it often. So I try to be real careful that I don't end up going through the thread in the hole that I'm working on. Okay, so now we're at the back here and we're gonna go all the way up. And actually, I think I'm gonna have to pull this through a little bit because I don't know if I'm gonna have enough thread to finish up here. So I am just going to pull my threads a little bit through everything so that I have a little bit more thread. Okay, so the next step then is to take this all the way up to the second hole from the top. <clears throat> and go in through that one. So now we've skipped the middle hole and we've gone through that one. And now we're going to go through the top hole Just make sure I'm in the right one there. To the back. And now we're going to go through the next hole that doesn't have any thread on it back into the center or the middle of the signature while trying not to pierce my thread. I don't think I did. And then our last stitch is to go back through the center hole to the back of the signature. Okay, so now you can see we have a stitch through each hole on both sides. So that's our five hole pamphlet stitch. Now what I'm gonna do before I tie anything is I'm gonna make sure all of my stitches are nice and tight. And I like to just sort of go over it just like I had stitched it. So I'll start at the middle and I will try and hold the middle ones and then I will just pull each stitch from either side to make sure that everything is nice and tight. And then um, I'm holding it from the back, so I've, I'm, I've made it tight, it looks nice in here. And then I'm just gonna check it on the page itself to make sure I don't have any bulges or loops, you know, um, here that it, maybe I missed and just it felt tight or something to me. So there we go. We've got that the way we want it. And now I'm going to tie it. And the way I tie it is I'm gonna put one of the ends on either side of the middle stitch there. And then I'm just going to give it a nice double, triple knot, something like that. 
And I am just gonna cut this down so that these don't end up getting in my way as we stitch the other ones in. Okay, so that's our last signature. And now I'm gonna go right through and stitch the rest. Okay, all my signatures now are sewn in. I have all my loose ends here, and this is the way it's going to go in the cover. So um, I probably, when I made this book cloth, I probably should have left the paper off and just sewed through the heat and bond, um, and then tried to put the paper over top because I, I want something to secure and hide these um, ends. I mean, they, they won't stick out and um, they probably won't be seen, but I do really kind of, I think, want them secured with something. So I just cut a piece of um, cheesecloth that I had, and I'm just going to glue that down over top. So um, I think the frayed edges, if they do pop out the top, will give it a nice shabby look. Um, but it will also, the glue will help secure the ends on the back here. Um, so next time I probably will do this book cloth a little bit differently. I think I'm going to have to try a couple things to kind of really get the feel of what works the best here, but this is what I'm going to do for now to, um, just to kind of make sure that my ends are nice and secure, uh, in something. So, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to put glue definitely over all the knots and throughout all of the stitching here. And I probably could have put another, maybe another um, piece of fabric on top, but I don't know, I, I didn't want this to get too thick either. So we're gonna see how this works. I think this will do what I want it to do. And we can always trim that down if we need to. And I'm gonna let that dry real good before we move on. Okay, my cheesecloth is nice and dry, and now we're ready to glue this into our cover. Now, I wanna be sure that the signatures are aligned in the middle of the spine. So I know that I have my seven signatures, so my middle signature should be in the middle of the spine, but I am just gonna make some marks so that I get it right, because I don't want, if I've you know got the signature block over to one side or the other, it's not gonna close you know, the way that I want it to. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm gonna try to line up the signatures, and I know I don't have it you know, top to bottom, but I'm really trying to look at the creases on my um, cover so that I can make some marks for myself. So I'm going to line these up in the middle as best that I can. Just make sure that, you know, both of my 
sides will close. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make some uh, pencil marks at the edge of my book cloth in the middle here. So I kind of know where they need to be when I'm gluing it down. And this is um, just a guesstimate here. So I think once I do that, now I'm just gonna line it up and try to look at my lines that I made there and just make sure, yeah, I think that's pretty good. So if I stay within these lines, I should be good. Now, the other thing that I wanna check um, is that I am pretty even from top to bottom. Now, if you remember, our cover is nine inches tall and our signatures are only eight and a half. So we need to have about a quarter of an inch on the top and a quarter of an inch on the bottom um, to be sure that we're nice and even in between. So I think this is just about where I want this to go. And that's looking pretty good. And I am kind of trying to have a heavy hand on my signature block in the middle here so that as I'm you know, testing it, I'm not moving it around um, at all. So I think I'm just gonna move it just a touch that way. And what I'm looking for when I'm closing it, obviously my book cloth is bending up, but I don't want my signatures to move. So that means that they're really not being affected by the crease. So before when I had one down and I lifted this up, I could see my end signature kind of move with the book. So that's what I don't want. I wanna be sure that my signatures are planted in the middle as best as possible. So while holding this, I am going to try to get some glue on here. And I'm only gonna glue, I'm gonna leave the spine open. I'm not gonna glue that. Um, so I'm just going to glue starting from the crease out to the end of the book cloth. So I'm just putting some glue down there. And I know since I made this little line just about where I need to come up to. And I'm going to put some glue on there. And we can touch up any edges if we need to. And I'm very carefully going to smooth this down and get it all over my fingers. And I may try to grab my bone folder. Hopefully I didn't move anything and just spread things out really well here. And I've got glue all over my bone folder, but that's okay. <clears throat> And I'm just gonna hold this a minute because I wanna be sure that it's in place. I don't want it to move when we do the other side. So I'm doing a little double check here. Okay, we're still looking good. See, I'm missing some glue up here, so we'll definitely have to go back and do that. But I want the rest to dry before I do any of that. So I'm just going to hang on to this um, until it dries. Maybe grab my coffee and have a little coffee. Okay, I think this is pretty dry on this side. There are some places I'm going to need to touch up, but I think I want to get the whole thing glued in before I do any of that touch up because I want um, to be sure that everything is real secure. So we're gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm going to glue ooh, just from the crease out to the line that I made. And I'm guesstimating the top and bottom. Like I said, we'll have to go back and um, touch up some of the edges that don't get glued down on this very scientific procedure here. <laughs> okay, same thing. I'm going to use my bone folder. And 
I'm going to make sure this is dry before we move on. Okay, I think we're pretty dry. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go back on each side and um, check for places where um, the glue didn't quite, didn't quite glue everything down and get back in there and touch all of those up. So up in my corner here, especially on this fabric, which is pretty thick, I just wanna be sure we're glued down. And I think on those fabric areas, I may need to just hold my finger down on them to make sure um, you know they adhere, and then I'll move on to the next one. So I'll speed this up, but that's all I'm gonna be doing now is I'm just going to touch up all these little places that are um, not quite glued down yet before we move on. Okay, so as you can see, I clipped these so that they would, the pages would stay off the sides until everything was good and dry. So once again, I think we're good and dry. Um, I am just going to go around these edges of my fabric here. And if there's any, um, any frayed edges, I'm just going to try to cut some of them off. I'm not going to be too crazy about it, but I just don't want things to get bulky. Um, or to be sticking out too much. So, whoops, throwing things around here. All right, and now we're going to work on our end pages. So, let me just see how this looks here. Looks like it's coming together perfectly my little cheesecloth sticking up there which I kind of like I don't know if you can see that and it looks like everything's good to go so far okay yes sir I think we are doing good. Okay, so now um, the finishing touches for this. I'm gonna grab the sheet. This is the sheet that I wanted to use for my end paper. I thought it matched the gold in there kind of nice and also uh, matches with my book cloth paper. So now I know that my each side of my cover is six inches by nine inches, so um, and I, my sheet is 12 by 12. So we'll see, I'm gonna cut it in half. I'm not gonna cut it down yet um, height wise. I'm just gonna cut it in half so I have six inches on each side and then we'll see what we need to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down. Six inches. So should be right in half 
And now um, I'm just going to see what I need here. So once again, we want to be sure that our end paper doesn't um, get into our crease because we don't we don't want it to fold over there. So I may have to cut it down a little bit more, which is fine. Um, and I want to, you know, leave a nice little edge around the whole thing. And I can see that six inches is going to be it's going to be too wide if I want to leave an edge. So I am going to have to cut this down a little bit more. But like I said, I'm I'm totally okay with that. I like to start big <laughs> and go down from there so that I make sure I'm not cutting things too short. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark these, mark this paper. Um, I kind of like this has some shadowing at the bottom. So I'm going to use this bottom piece as, um, you know, what I want. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up to measure my width. I'm going to line up where I want my border on the left hand side to go and then I'm just going to use a pencil and mark the other side so I can see my crease is about right here and then I want to come in another maybe quarter of an inch to give me a nice border around there so I'm going to cut there and then to do my top to bottom border I'm going to kind of do the same thing I'm going to come in from the edge just so I can see you know where the edge of the book goes the edge of the cover goes and I'm going to line up my bottom I want about a quarter of an inch border at the bottom and then I'm going to mark the top as the same so excuse me if my head gets in the way while I look over there I guess I could do it this way too to make sure that <clears throat> I have it where I want it and then my head won't be in your way. And I can see maybe, all right, we're gonna start there, I think. So, and I'm also gonna mark this as the front because I like to do the front and the back separate just in case, you know, something's a little off. Then I know that each one will match, you know, its measured spot just where I want it to be. So let's go ahead and cut this one down. And I'm just uh, placing it on here. And that gives me um, a nice amount of room here so that it doesn't hit my crease. So I think that's going to be perfect for the front and we'll do the same thing for the back. So I'm going to move this one out of the way and we'll do the same thing for the back. I'm going to decide if I want the top or the bottom. And once again, the bottom has the shading that I like. So I think I'm going to do it that way. And first let's measure our front to back. And now I have to decide what to do here because our hole with our elastic is there. So um, what I might do is I might see if I can figure out um, how to just cut in and around that. I don't really know how I might do that, but let me think about that for a minute. I'm gonna cut it to the size that I want it because I still you know, want a nice border around everything. So I'm going to do my width here. I want about a quarter of an inch. I can move that in just a little. right there. Okay, I think I need to move all this stuff. It's always getting in the way here. <laughs> okay, and now let's do the height. Okay. And I'm just going to mark this the back. Okay, so first let's 
let's cut this down. Okay, and I think I got that where I want it. So now what I want to do is I want to figure out what I'm doing there. I'm going to erase my pencil marks before I forget to do that. And I think what I may try and do is I may just try to cut a little slice here. Um so that I can get in there maybe with my hole punch and just open that up. So let me see if I can do that by marking this kind of where I want it. And I think I want it to come on this side and this side. And I don't even think I need very big, so maybe I can just chomp in there. Let's see. There's my regular size hole punch. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll probably straighten this out with um, an edger after I'm done, but I'm just going to use maybe a little bit bigger. I don't think I have a bigger hole punch though. Let me see if I can go to one side and the other and make it look <laughs> right. Okay. I think maybe what I could do is add have these little just paper hole punches. I could probably add a couple around this and that'll make it look um, more finished. And then I'll just cut out the edges that are going around there. So, so what I'm going to do, um, this, these are sticky, but I'm just going to add some additional glue to make sure it doesn't come off. And this might even get covered up when I put the pockets and stuff that I want on here. Um, so we might not even, this may be sort of extra that I don't even really need to be doing, but sometimes you just want things the way you want them. Okay, so let me grab my scissors. And if I was leaving it like that, it would look great, wouldn't it? I think that would look good. But before I put these on, these papers on, um, of course, I have to do a little bit of embellishing. So I hadn't completely decided what I'm doing for the front and the back yet, but I am going to add some pockets or some flaps or something to these um, before I glue them down because I probably would like to sew on them or, or something. So I'll be right back with this and then we'll finish this up. Okay, I have added some pockets to my front and back end pages. So I just used some cardstock and I did um, sew, 
I don't think I sewed this one, but I sewed this one to it. And then this one has a couple of little pockets here um, on it ready to go. So I wanted to be sure those were all done before we glued de them down. So now all we're gonna do is we're gonna glue them in. And you can see, I wanted to just come back and mention, I did decide to glue this, leaving that hole um, open because I really don't want the elastic to, you know, pull through it or anything like that. So I think that turned out quite nice as, um, you know, sort of an on the fly thing that we had to do there. So let's go ahead and get these glued in. And um, just so you know, too, I did ink all the edges um, because, well, that's, you know, that's what I do. I like to ink all the edges. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm going to add my glue to the back of this and we'll get these glued down. And I am going to use my, whatever this is, Fabri-Tac. And I'm pressing it all down and I am gonna give this a minute to dry before we move on to the front, to gluing down the front. Okay, now let's do the front. And because I have this screw that, that went into the back of our hitch post closure, I am just gonna add a little dab of glue to that um, as well as covering the back here, just to be sure um, you know that gets nice and covered. So, um, you know, obviously we don't want that to come undone for us. So I'm just gonna add some glue there and then glue all over my front piece here, just like we did the back. And since this one has a little bit of sewing in there, I will take a little time and just make sure uh, my stitches are covered here. Pretty good. Okay. And then when I press this side down, I am just going to, I'm going to press all over, but I'm going to, you know, give a, an extra, extra attention to that little screw that was in the back of our hitch post there. Make sure that is secure. And I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll come back and we'll do a little flip through of our book. All right, everything's dry, our book is put together. So let's do a little flip through, see how it turned out. Now I didn't do any um, decorating on the front here, but certainly we could put on a plate or some sort of picture or something like that if I wanted to. But right now, I think I like it just like this. So we have our hitch binding, our post binding, and I'm just gonna do a quick flip through um, because you've seen most of this since we did it together. So I did go through and add some ephemera to it. And as you can see, I kind of have a little bit of a bird theme going. As I was making some ephemera, I was I had been fussy cutting some birds out of a new book that I had just got. And I think that um, it goes nicely with this. So like I said, I'm just gonna do a quick flip through. This is a pocket. Um, I didn't put anything in that one. Some dictionary pages and two little tuck spots there more birds 
And I love these castle pages. They're nice and long, so they make nice side pockets. And for some of my ephemera, I used my Birds of Asia digital cards that are in my Etsy shop. I'll put the link down below if you'd like to take check them out. And some an envelope here. More pockets. And this is from a great book that I found in New Hampshire at a thrift store. And it just had a whole bunch of menus in it and most of them were in um, French. It's really beautiful. Another envelope. This is a little um, paper clip that has a little tag in there. And I also have a video for that. So that is down below too, if you'd like to check out how to make those. This is another pocket. And just a little flip spot here. You could add something in. Lots of places to write, which I wanted to have. Little tag here. Two little tags, matching tags that are uh, from index cards. And another note card there on that tag. And this is another one from the Birds of Asia kit. And that is it. And then at the back, there's a little pocket here that you could put something in. Here, I'll just grab a little postcard that I have. So there, you can put something in the back here. And then you could also put something in here if you wanted. And you could even put something in here there's a little pocket right here that you could put something in as well. And that is it. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you make one of these. And if so, I hope that you'll tag me on social media so that I can see it. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much, friends. So long.